kind of, kind of focus on some common ground. Uh, the common ground is that we all want our children to sing in a, a beautiful head voice. I think most of us want that. And uh, even uh, when we have children come in and audition for our children's voice, it is amazing how many kids cannot get into their head voice, that they're in their low voice. You've all experienced this. And so that's, uh, that's a goal that is common with all of us. And the other one is uh, artistry, making musicians out of these young children. Sometimes I don't think we give them enough credit for uh, their ability to, to be artists, to, to create beauty, to create music that touches them deep inside. So we're going to focus on, on both of those things. Um, and these exercises uh, that I give you are, are ways to uh, get them up into their head voice. But first of all, uh, for warm-ups in a rehearsal, we need to kind of do some physical things. So everybody stand up. And, uh, oh, let's stretch. It's early in the morning. Let's just stretch, okay? And uh, stretch a little bit. Yep, there we go. Drop your hands. Roll your shoulders. Uh, Roll your neck. Sometimes these things will work with children if you have a good control of your group. Uh, raise your shoulders all the way up and drop them. Raise them halfway up and drop them. Shake your hands. Okay. Uh, now then, you got to move in a little closer together and turn to your right and rub the shoulders of the person in front of you. <laughs> Everybody loves this exercise. <laughs> Okay, yes, nice round. I turned you left. Oh, somebody's left now. Oh, okay. Turn around again to get the little karate talk. And turn around again. Okay. Alright. Face uh, the front. Okay, here we go. You can go back to your place with that. Uh, let's keep standing and everybody uh got a liver. Be, be a rag doll. Okay, just all the way over, ragdoll. Okay, now stand up. Uh, be a soldier. Okay, be a, a, a robot. Okay, uh, hands down. Play the flute. Play the trumpet. Uh, clarinet. Uh, now be a singer. Okay, and this, of course, is what we want our children to realize. Uh, they can't sing as well as they're able to if they don't have good posture. I've seen children's choirs that, that you know sing like this, and you know what they're going to sound like. And I, I've also seen kind of <laughs> stiff choirs, and you know what they're going to sound like too. It's going to be kind of a forced tone. So a very natural uh, posture, and you have to kind of keep working on this with with children. Sometimes the children are not engaged, and they'll. You know, they like to be on one hip, you know, that kind of thing. So you have to engage them, you know, as, as the uh, director. And then uh, with breathing, uh, to take a nice breath. Uh, of course, we all know you don't raise the shoulders. So you put your hands on your shoulders. Don't let the shoulders move. And take a nice deep breath. And then hiss. And I'll count. Okay, ready? Breathe. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Blow it all out. Very good. Uh, if you put your hand on your stomach and one hand on the small of your back, when you breathe, these muscles come out. It's like some come out a little bit more than others, but <laughs> uh, they come out. But a lot of people breathe backwards. They they take breath and it you know this comes in. Well, no, this comes out slightly to support the air going out. You don't push it out. You just let it come out. It's like a little baby in a crib. If you've ever seen a tiny baby, their, their stomach is moved. That's what's helping them breathe. Or if you lie on the floor and uh, just lie as still as you can, this is what is moving. So everybody feel the hand come out slightly. And uh, uh, this time, let's sing on the pitch. Let's sing blue. <laughs>
all of these exercises that we're going to do today uh, are usable within a rehearsal too. You don't have to do them all at once at the beginning of a rehearsal. But breathing is important. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll make the analogy of swimming underwater. You know, do you take a breath when you're halfway under the pool? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, children have a tendency to sing short phrases unless we really uh, impress upon them that the phrases need to be long. Okay, be seated. And uh, the other things that we need to think about, uh, posture, breathing. Of course, in choral music, we need to think about those pure vowel sounds. Uh, that's the whole basis of choral singing. And for years, I have used uh, imagery of colors. And uh, it, it seems to, the kids seem to have latch on to this. If we master the five basic vowels, then that makes our singing better, then we can adjust and modify our vowels as we need to. But this one, let's do a little bit. Let's do, uh, sing this pitch on blue, okay? Or this color on blue. Ready? And yes, okay. And then go. Don't sing mustard. <laughs> Gold. Uh, conducted for children, I think. One of them. 
And I would totally recommend his book, uh, Creating Artistry Through Choral Excellence. Now this is a, uh, uh, what shall I say, uh, it, it's for people who work with uh, community children's courses, mainly, but I mean, you can adapt all these things to any kind of choir. Um, and it's, uh, he uh, stresses artistry and also expanding the voice. There's a lot of good material in this, in this book, uh, published by Hal Leonard. Um, I don't think I put it on the list, so I, it may not be out in the, in the demonstration there, but I would highly recommend that. Uh, and some of these are uh, from that. This first one, uh, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, song, uh, give, it's, gives energy. Uh, a lot of kids, you know, come in, they have no energy in their singing, and you want to give them energy. So, uh, so here we go. Uh, one other thing. When you're uh, working and you want to really establish head voice, if that has not been established in your choir, I would recommend starting at a higher pitch than, you know, most people start on a uh, C, middle C. You know, C. You know, well, you can't really get going on a good head voice in middle C. So I'd start, uh, you know, maybe up at E. Older women that have 
trouble getting up, you know, and they start pinching, you know, when they go up high. This will help, you know, um, and it, it's a wonderful technique um, to get that unification, get that beautiful sound. Uh, letter D, uh, this came from Robert Shaw. Uh, years ago in the 70s, I went to one of his workshops at Westminster Choir College, and uh, uh, 300 choral directors gathered. And it's quite interesting to be on the other side of the fence. Uh, we all had to sing for uh, Thomas Pyle, who was our, uh, uh, Alice Parker's husband. We had to go in and sing uh, My Country Tis It. And you should see these choral directors fretting, and they would go in and sing, and they'd go out stomping bad. You know? uh -huh. <laughs> because they'd done so poorly, I guess. But uh, the purpose of that was to classify it, to give you a number. And he gave the bases like a number from, oh, I don't know, from, um, from 100 to 140. And then if he needed more uh, baritones, you know, he would say, well, all bases number 100 to 110 sing the baritone, the baritone part. He would do that with everybody, the sopranos and all. Then you'd have more second sopranos. Kind of a neat way to do yeah. it if you have a large, very large group. Uh, but, <coughs> But very interesting. But we did this exercise there. D D D D D. D D D D D. Just click them off. D D D D. And I use a stop T instead. D D D D T. Don't give me a stop T. D D D D D. Just stop it. Ready? One, two, ready. D D D D D. Concept. 
uh, or I will take those words and put them up on the board and spell them phonetically so that they can sing it. So uh, sing the word with light, L-I-G-H-T, ready right hand. And just, just watch me, we don't sing the rhythm here. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. 
fuzzy wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy wuzzy. I got this from my childhood. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready and fuzzy wuzzy wasn't. some of these up. You can just make up a sentence with using that word, uh, using that consonant. Ready, Billy? Billy wants a ball above the Billy. Billy wants a ball above the Billy. Billy wants a ball above the Billy. Yes, okay. <clears throat> Another one that I've used, uh, my body lies over the ocean. Uh, and then on, every time you sing a B, you stand up. So put your books down. Okay. Here we go. And every time you sing a B, stand up. Ready? And my body lies over the ocean. Keep standing. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> Some of you have already done this, right? Here we go. Ready? And my body lies over the ocean. Way to introduce 
use harmony. Intervals, uh, kind of interesting. Major second, let's try that. Here we go, ready and. Major second, major third. You don't want to 
will go too high, uh, but you'll know. Uh, letter R. A lot of people use this. Western Noble's brother, who 
through here, the very uh, fine choral director, I think he's retired now, but he uh, was in Hawaii. I, I heard of his choir in Hawaii. I was there doing a church. If you can imagine doing a church thing in Hawaii, but, you know, I was just so sad to be able to do that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, there was a, a girls' choir at the high school, and they used this exercise, and it's for, uh, let's have only the trebles on this, uh, for SSA. Uh, let's have first soprano, second soprano, and alto. Okay, so everybody sing. First of all, we'll, we'll just sing one script. Here we go.
Uh, it is Maynu. Maynu. I believe it is Maynu. Uh, yeah. That's the way we've always sung yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Is that right? Well, it's time to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's been around a long time. Uh, I think maybe Doreen Rao was the one that kind of introduced this. But you've seen it in a lot of books. In fact, I'm going to present a, uh, that Madeline Bridges book on, on Friday, which is a very good book. Forgot the name of it, but uh, it's a lot of canons are in there. This is one of them. Uh, it's a public domain, you know. These all these little things are. Uh, this comes from Jane Marshall. Uh, back on up. Does anybody know this? This is a long. This is from a long time ago. You're telling. Oh, when you were in there. Yeah. My choir director did it when I was like four years old. Well, I know. Back on up. Here we go. Ready and. Back on up and just a And I do this with my kids, and after they know it, I have them sing it this way, and then I have oh, them yeah. sing it this way. Perfect idea. Yeah. See, that's using movement, that's using body, that's excellent. You know, they sing like an organ pipe, and this is certainly not an organ pipe. You know, mm -hmm. perfect, very good. Uh, Grace Nash, years ago, uh, did this. Everything I say is years ago, <laughs> but anyway, uh, whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, rest. See you later, alligator, is the eighth one text. Yep. Run, out, 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 hold, notes, count to four. Mix them up, tap them out, now let's do some more. So let's try, okay? And kind of put your notes uh, in your lap. Here we go. And hold, notes, tap, notes, quarter, notes, rest. See you later, alligator, is the eighth one text. Run, out, out, out.
and then they, and then they start it with the words, and they leave out a successive phrase each time. Uh, we've used this a lot. My wife does this with uh, some of the younger players, which is why I don't know it too well. <laughs> but it's a great one, uh, especially with younger children, just to get them moving. Then let's take a quick look at uh, some of these uh, global pieces. Global music is really big. It has been for several years. And children love it because they love languages. They love learning about another culture. Uh, Hallelujah, they love so Rona. We tell them that in South African music, it's not like uh, the music of Mozart or Haydn or the music that we sing. It's, it's a little bit rugged, you know. Every note is, is accented. Uh, Hallelujah, they love so Rona.
Uh, we don't have much time for questions. I think we're just about out of time here. But I want to ask about this last Yes. Uh, you use it for uh, warm up time. You use it for uh, focusing on your, when you're teaching. How do you yes. Teach? Well, in all kinds of ways. Warm up is very good. You can use it in worship. Yeah. You can have the children right. sing it and use it as a prayer response. Uh, We're sitting here thinking, yes. we sing in October, right after choir starts, with mm -hmm. 150 kids, and all three of these are restricted making arrangements. Oh, absolutely. Like, like, it would be together. fabulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would really be fabulous. Because they have to learn something so quickly. Sure. Yeah, yeah those, uh, and I'm all for that, you know, learning something simple and singing it mm -hmm. soon yeah. to get them really motivated. They would, that would be beautiful. The Santo Santo is the, uh, I think the National Council of Churches has that as kind of their, uh, maybe a theme song. It's an Argentine song. There's some pretty easy signing that goes with yeah, Oh, signing is yeah. great. That's good signing is yeah. great. And you can sometimes even have all the children learn the song or have somebody. You know, beautiful, beautiful melodies and all. So, very, very good.